Hi, I'm Giselle. I'm a tutor at, here at Ventura College. And today I'm here to talk about the plant cell and the animal cell and the structures that they have and their functions. So I'm going to talk about, um, first of all, I'm going to talk about the organelles that both of them share. So the first one I'm going to talk about here is the nucleus. And the nucleus contains our DNA. So it is composed of three major things, which we have is the nucleolus. And the nucleolus is a place where the, there's ribosome synthesis going on. Then we have our chromatin, which is our uncoiled DNA floating around. And we have our nuclear envelope. Our nuclear envelope also has pores that allow molecules to go in and out of the cell. Um, we have also, we have these little structures right here. I have them labeled right here. They're the ribosomes. Now the ribosomes are composed of RNA and proteins and are made um, and are there for protein synthesis. We have two different types of ribosomes which we have. We have the um, free ribosomes and then we have our bound ribosomes. Now the difference between these is our free ribosomes are floating around the cell freely. Now our bound ribosomes are um, connected or bounded to our nuclear envelope or our endoplasmic reticulum, which we'll talk about now. We have now we have our, our endoplasmic reticulum, which are both as well shared by animal and plant cells. And um, we have there's two kinds. There's the rough endoplasmic reticulum and then there's the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Now the rough endoplasmic reticulum is called rough because it's studded with ribosomes as well. Versus the smooth is not, so it's considered smooth. Um, the ER is, um, is there to synthesize proteins and lipids, as well as other things, and it's also used to detox molecules within the cell. Um, we also have our vesicles, which are floating around. Oh, now we do. We have vesicles right here, and these, where I'll label them. And these are pretty much transfer shuttles, which allow um, things to be transported in and out of the cell or moved around from organelle to organelle. These vesicles, for example, here can come out of the rough endoplasmic reticulum and then go into this structure, which is called the Golgi apparatus. Now, the Golgi apparatus, which is labeled right here, the Golgi apparatus is kind of like the FedEx of the cell. It pretty much grabs the incoming vesicles that could be coming from any part of the cell and then sorts them and transports them into the specific areas that it needs to go in. Um, we also have these structures right here, the lysosomes. Now the lysosomes actually, those are within the animal cell only. So the animal cell contains these things called lysosomes and the lysosomes are used to pretty much break down, um, worn down material within the cell, worn down organelles. When mitochondria doesn't work, they come in here and pretty much break them down. Um, now, uh, we have as well, we have these structures right here called the peroxisomes. The peroxisomes are shared within the plant cell and animal cell. And the peroxisomes pretty much have um, detoxified, like, uh, they pretty much detox things as well. They have these enzymes that detox uh, harmful, possibly harmful molecules that could enter the cell. Um, so now that we talked about the ER, Golgi, and so forth, we could just, that the way that I like to think of it is that um, the order that it goes into for something to be packaged out of the cell is first it gets processed through the endoplasmic reticulum, and then a vesicle will come in here and enter through the backside of the Golgi apparatus. Golgi apparatus will then sort it out and then go into another vesicle and then the, that vesicle will float out over here and then go outside of the cell. Now, um, um, here is another, I, I went next to the cell membrane, I'll go through the cell membrane and the cell membrane is pretty much composed of a phospholipid bilayer as well with proteins within them as well uh, called transfer proteins. And pretty much this is just, it allows for cell communication and also for molecules to be allowed in and out of the cell as well as the plant cell right here, this area, this black surrounding area is the cell membrane as well. Now another one we have, we have our centrioles which are also only in the animal cell. Now the centrioles provide the um, spindle fibers needed in cell division. 
So that's why it's really important. Versus plant cells, they don't. They develop this thing called a cell plate. They, they divide differently than animal cells. Um, we also have our mitochondria, which is the powerhouse of the cell. The mitochondria um, in animal cells, we are animals, and the food we eat is then absorbed by the mitochondria to then break them up and make it into ATP, which is cell energy. Um, we have our cytoskeleton as well. And our cytoskeleton here, it's, um, it's pretty much, there's like a little mini portion in reality. These are all fibers, microfibers that are connecting throughout the whole cell, connecting and keeping its structure um, of the cell. Um, the fluid between both of these, I have it labeled here, but the fluid between both of these is called um, the cytoplasm. And that cytoplasm is pretty much all the, the fluid area and the stuff between them. They're, they're not, it's not dry, it's all in liquid. So that's our cytoplasm. Um, we also have here now another big difference that I didn't mention right now was that the mitochondria versus the chloroplast. These are both powerhouses of the cell. The only thing is that in plant cells, mitochondria are quite rare. They are they're a lot more common in, in um, animal cells because what plant cells have is these these organelles called chloroplasts. Now chloroplasts convert solar energy into food, glucose, and the, and through, um, this, is a, this is a site for photosynthesis. Um, our plant cell here, another big difference is we have the vacuole. Now the vacuole, it's called the central vacuole in plant cells, and they pretty much hold mostly water as well as um, other things such as proteins. It's usually like a, a water and storage component, and it also keeps its structure as well. Um, another big difference <laughs> is the cell wall. Now plant cells have a cell wall versus animal cells do not. A cell wall in a plant cell is composed of chitin and cellulose and this is also to keep its blocky structure. Usually um, plant cells when they're together within, within a leaf uh, they're a lot more um, uniform versus animal cells are kind of more floating within our system. Um, so here I wrote down the main differences is that a plant cell contains, it has a cell wall, it has chloroplasts, and it has a central vacuole. Versus animal cells do not have these features and they also have lysosomes versus plant cells do not. So that's about it. That wraps it all up. This is what a plant cell has to offer in an animal cell.